morning, third graders. All right, today we are going to talk a little bit about grammar, some grammar. And we're going to learn about quotations. I know that you guys have been using quotes in your IEW papers. And I want to teach you some rules today that come from our Shirley Grammar book here. All right, but I want to um, first read you two stories. So listen closely to these two stories and tell me which one you like better. They're basically the same exact story, but they're just told a little differently. Okay, first story, story one. While Mrs. Simonowski went upstairs to make a copy, the students in the third grade classroom began to inquire about a piece of candy. Four of these students felt that they had all earned a piece of candy that day for different reasons, but forgot to obtain it. Other students thought that they should wait until the return of Mrs. Simonowski, but because of this desire for instant candy gratification, the four youngsters ignored the advice of their wise peers and headed toward the jar. However, two other boys quickly intercepted, held back the group of greedy students, and threw the jar to a nimble classmate. He was about to catch the jar when Mrs. Simonowski opened the door to see the fiasco. Thankfully, a wise young man made a humble apology, which caused Mrs. Simonowski to reward the class with jelly beans. <clears throat> the end, story one. Story two. Mrs. Simonowski told her students, I am quickly leaving the room to make a copy upstairs. Jasmine, since you are the VIP, please watch for any disruptions. When Mrs. Simonowski left the room, Levi quickly shouted to Liam and Grady, Hey, didn't you guys stand up in chapel today? Liam replied, Yes, that's right. I should get a piece of candy for that. Chloe wisely interjected, I think you should wait until the teacher is back. But Neil and Ian proclaimed, We took chairs down this morning and forgot to get our candy too. Eliana replied, I also help with the chairs today. By this time, Anna and several others, including Evie, Miriam, and Sarah, shouted, Everyone should be quiet and eat their lunch. However, by this time, many of the students who thought they deserved some candy were swiftly cruising toward the coveted candy jar. Ethan and Gage jumped in front of these candy connoisseurs and defended Mrs. Simonowski's candy jar by shouting, Stand back! Good things come to those who wait. Then, to everyone's horror, they grabbed the jar and tossed it to Matthew, who would have incredibly caught the jar with his skilled athleticism, but at this exact same moment, as the jar was heading towards Matthew's hands, Mrs. Simonowski opened the door and the careening candy jar fell to the ground with an explosion of glass everywhere. Samuel jumped from his chair with disbelief in his eyes and quietly said, we are sorry for this disruption, Mrs. Simonowski. Our greedy and impulsive hearts got the best of us. Mrs. Simonowski's astonishing reply to this was, I am so moved by this humble apology of Samuel that I would like to reward for his character by giving the class a jelly bean. The end. Okay, now. Which story did you like better, story one or story two? Which one was more interesting? Well, hopefully you said story two because it had many quotations in it, right? Many people were talking back and forth and saying things in that story, and it made the story come alive. And it helps when you write this way using quotations, it makes your readers who read your story, believe that they're right in the middle of the action. Quotations help build pictures, all right, for your readers as the story unfolds. <clears throat> and as you write more and more IEW papers this year, uh, I want you to have fun with using quotes 
uh, back and forth between people, but I want you to know the rules for the quote when you use quotations. Okay, so let's, this is what I wanted to show you at first. In your Shirley Grammar book, on pages 41 and 42, it gives you two different boxes in there, and it shows you the rules for using quotation marks. Well, when I look at that, when I look at those boxes, there's so much information that it makes me kind of go crazy and I wanna go hide. <laughs> so it might make you feel that way too, and that's why I wanted to show you uh, what it shows you in the book. It says something like this, pattern, you have a pattern, and then it shows you this pattern. It shows you quotation mark, C, capital C, um, dash quote, dash, and then in parentheses it has a comma, an exclamation mark, a question mark, and then parentheses that close, closing parentheses. So these are opening parentheses, they open the sentence, they open what the person says, and this is when the person is done talking, those are called closed parentheses. And then it has this word explanatory, it's underlined, and then it has a period. Now to me, you look at that and you go, I don't know what that means. Well, I'm here to help you understand what that means. Okay, I'm gonna move my camera, I'm gonna turn it now over here to these sentences. These are actual quotes that came from our story that I just read you. And so when you use this pattern, what it is telling you is that you look for the quote. Okay, well, one of the quotes was this one. It's, it was Levi and he said, didn't you guys stand up in chapel? Now, the reason this pattern starts with parentheses is because this is where Levi started talking. He said, didn't. He started with that word, so you put quotation marks around, didn't. Now, the pattern says a capital C. That capital C just means, don't forget that the beginning of a quote, it has to have a capital letter, okay? So this has to be a capital D. So we're gonna change that. Didn't you guys stand up in chapel? That's our quote, okay? So we've got our parentheses. We changed it to a capital letter. Now we've written the quote that Levi said, and now we have to decide if before we uh, uh, write, sorry, I'm thinking about this as I go, we have to decide how he ends that quote. Does he end it with yelling it? Does he yell that quote so it would be an exclamation mark? Uh, is he asking a question? And so it would be a question mark? Or uh, would we put a comma because we have to write Levi said after the quote? Okay. Well, for sure we know that it's a question because Levi's asking, didn't you guys stand up in chapel? So I'm gonna put a question mark, all right? And then I need to put the end of my, my closing quotation marks because that's Levi's done talking. I'm gonna put those there. <clears throat> explanatory. This word came after the pattern but you can have explanatory before the pattern too. And in this case, it's before because Levi, uh, I think he asked, I think that's what it said. Levi asked, okay, comma. And I'm gonna underline the explanatory words. The explanatory words just mean that Levi explained something, okay? Explanatory means that he is explaining uh, the quote. He's saying the quote. It's an explanation. And he's explaining the quote. So Levi asked. That's the explanatory words. He didn't say anything there. That's just who's talking. The explanatory words are who is talking. So I'm going to underline that. <clears throat> okay, another quote that was said in our 
story was, I think you should wait. And I believe that was Chloe who said that. And so we're going to put that Chloe said that at the end. So according to our pattern, we, gotta, we need to put quotation marks around what Chloe said. Make sure it's a capital letter. Yeah, I is capitalized. Say the quote, I think you should wait. And she probably just, she shouldn't yell it, and she, it's not a question. Um, but I'm not gonna put a period, <clears throat> I'm gonna put a comma, because it's not the end of the sentence. It's the end of Chloe's quote. So I'm gonna put a comma, I'm gonna put my ending quotation marks, and then I'm gonna put Chloe said, or Chloe suggested, okay? But just to make it short, <clears throat> even though said is a banned word, I'm gonna write that and show you that that's, that's our explanatory words. I'm underlining the person who is explaining that quote. I think you should wait, and we don't put a period here because it's still part of the sentence that Chloe said that. Hope that makes sense. <clears throat> My dog here, she's watching me teach. There's Stella, hello Stella, hi girl. Yes, she's my student today. She's very good, she never blurts, it's wonderful. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna go to this next sentence and we're gonna use our rules. This was Eliana. Eliana replied, okay? Eliana replied, now, this is the explanatory words. That's the person who's talking, okay? Eliana replied, comma. We're always gonna put a comma after the person replies or says something, and then we're putting our quotation marks around the quote. I helped him with the chairs today. Uh, I don't know if she yelled that. I think she just said it, so we're gonna put a period because we already wrote that she, we already underlined our explanatory words. They were in the beginning, not at the end. So this is the end of her quote and the end of the sentence. So we're putting a period and we're putting quotation marks after the period. Last one, everyone should be quiet, yelled uh, Anna and who else yelled that? Um, <clears throat> Oh, several of them. So let's just say Anna here, okay? Uh, everyone should be quiet, yelled Anna. So here's the beginning of our uh, quote. Everyone should be quiet. We're gonna put quotation marks around it. We're gonna make sure it has a capital letter, okay? So we're gonna change that to a capital E. Everyone should be quiet is the quote. I think she yelled that, so we're going to put an exclamation mark. That was all her quote. That's all she said. Everyone should be quiet. Uh, yelled, or let's say shouted, Anna. Okay, that's the person who is doing the explanation, who is saying the quote. So those are explanatory words, period. We want to close the sentence with a period. Okay, uh, I think that you have an assignment in your workbook, and um, if you get stuck or don't understand it, be sure that you have a parent email me or you can call me, all right? You can FaceTime, you can call me on the phone, whatever is easiest, and I can walk you through it. All right, you guys, have a great day.